Welcome back to Chess Dog. This is John, and today I have a very exciting game, another one from Tani Atawumi. And I have to be honest with you, after having witnessed this game, I think he's even better than I thought he was. He just celebrated his 11th birthday recently, and uh, this game was played just a little before that. He was still 10 years old, as you may already know. He became a master at the very young age of 10. And in this game, which is a blitz game, he's playing against a grandmaster named Christian Kyrila. And uh, a little interesting story about Kyrila, just an example of how strong he is. A number of years ago, I was playing in a tournament, and my opponent was an international master. And my game was right next to Kyrila's game. And I was lucky enough to get a draw in my game. And our game and Kyrila's game ended at about the same time. And at that time, Kyrila leaned over and started showing us different variations in the game. Painfully for me, they were variations that would have favored me quite a bit. But I didn't see them at all during the game. And my international master opponent did not see them at all during the game. In other words, Kyrila analyzed our game better than we did while he was busy playing another game and only glancing at our position. So he's very strong. I know Gotham Chess has a video where Kyrila uh, defeated him uh, in a really brilliant uh, game. So Tani's opponent here is quite strong. So that makes this game all the more amazing. Tani has the white pieces. He begins with e4. Kyrila plays the Sicilian defense. Knight f3, knight c6, d4, the open Sicilian. And Kyrila plays an unorthodox line. He, I think he wants to get Tani out of his opening book. Plays queen to b6. Tani plays knight to b5, probably the most aggressive move. And Kyrila plays d6. Better idea is probably knight f6, bishop e3, queen d8, knight 1c3. That would be better for black. After d6, Tani plays bishop to e3, and black plays the queen black back to d8. Now, Kyrila has actually already made a mistake here, uh, and Tani could have maybe crushed him already if he had actually known the theory. What that tells us is that what we see in this game is Tani's on his own. He's coming up with these moves on his own. Uh, he, this is not theory or anything like that. This is just his brain processing the board and playing the moves, and that's scary. The most effective move order here would actually be knight 1 to c3. The idea is you play the knight to d5, and then those knights are threatening a check at c7. If black tries to kick the knight out, then you just go ahead and play that knight in any way. Then if you take the knight, bishop to b6, check. And the game is actually over here. Queen goes to d7, knight to c7, check. Wins the rook, king d8. Now it's a discovered check after you take the rook, and you just bring the knight back. So that actually would have been decisive. But Tani sets up the Meroxy bind, which is a, a very good idea if you haven't, you know, memorized the theory. He plays c4, and those pawns on e4 and c4 are trying to keep black from freeing his position with the move d5. a6, kicking the knight back, knight f6, hitting the e-pawn, and also maybe threatening knight to g4 to irritate the bishop on e3, f3, g6. Now, it's important in these Meroxy bind positions... Right here, black can kind of choose his structure. He can play e6 and create a Scheveningen type structure, or he can play g6 and play a dragon structure. And in the Meroxy bind, black is better off playing the dragon structure. He's taking better advantage of the weak dark squares and the open long diagonal, and he's not creating a backwards pawn on d6. So g6, the dragon structure. Knight d2, bishop g7, knight to b3, castles, bishop, d, bishop to e2. And again, we see that the standard Meroxy bind position can occur in a lot of different openings, not just the accelerated dragon. That's why it's so important to study chess structures, not just opening theory. Bishop goes to e6. He wants to target that c4 pawn. Play rook to c8. The knight can go to e5, maybe a5. Knight to d4, centralizing the knight, threatening the bishop on e6. Kyrila exchanges it. He has less space, so he wants to exchange pieces. Rook to c8, piling on the c4 pawn. b3, protecting the c4 pawn. The Grandmaster Kyrila plays queen to a5, pinning the knight on c3 to the king. Tani plays queen to d2, now the neutralizing that pin. Kyrila plays knight to d7. Now, in these structures, black actually doesn't necessarily mind exchanging dark-squared bishops. It 
can make it easier for him to take advantage of the weak dark squares white has in his position. It leaves white with the worse bishop, the bad bishop, the light squared bishop. And also it exchanges pieces, again, having less space. Bishop g7, king g7, h4. And at this point in the game, uh, Kyrila says to Tani, he says, you're trying to checkmate me. <laughs> and Tani, with the confidence of a 35-year-old man, says, uh, how else am I going to beat you? You know, that's how I'm going to beat you, he tells him. So he's confident and he's playing aggressive chess, a good sign for a young talent. H5 to keep that H pawn from rolling. Knight to D5. Now, Tani is willing to go into the end game. He offers up the exchange of queens, and he's going to play a position where he, his minor piece may not be as good as Black's right now, but he'll have more space and he'll have a target on E7. Queen captures D2. King captures D2. Bishop takes the knight. Pawn takes the uh, or bishop take it. pawn takes the bishop excuse me now we've seen this structure before in a game i covered of, of ryo chen another 11 year old master very talented player he was playing an im they got this exact same structure out of a completely different opening the samish king's indian again structures are really important in chess uh, kyrila plays knight to e5 tani responds with f4 i think kyrila wanted that he was trying to tempt that F pawn forward because now there's a weakness at G4 as well that maybe later in the game he could take advantage of. The knight goes back to D7, bishop to D3, knight to C5. And uh, again, like in the Ryo game, Tani protects the bishop at C2. Um, he should, it would be okay to let black take that bishop because that knight's pretty strong right now, but he has more space. He wants to keep, keep the bishop on the board. b5. Black attacks the c4 pawn. He wants to exchange those pawns and leave white with a weakness on c4 and also a weak square at c5. Tani plays rook h to e1, attacking the weakest square in black's position, which is the e7 square, that e7 pawn. Irela defends it very economically. King to f6. He uses the king to defend the square. And although the king is advanced, the king is actually quite safe on f6 and is ready to be used as an attacking piece in the endgame. Uh, so Tani doesn't want to let the grandmaster carry out his strategy of creating this weakness on c4. So he advances b4, kicking the knight away. Knight to d7. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. Now he's created a weakness at b5 that he immediately targets with bishop to d3, aiming the bishop at that pawn. Kyrila could have played rook to b8 to defend that pawn. That would have been a good option. He instead chooses the more aggressive option, knight to b6. He says, you can take my b5 pawn, but I'm going to counterattack and take your d5 pawn, which is what happens. Bishop captures d5. Knight takes d5. And now we see the battle lines for the endgame. White has a queenside pawn majority. The grandmaster has a pawn majority in the center. Tani has the light squared bishop. And the grandmaster has the knight. And I think the bishop is probably better right now in this position. You have an open position, which favors the bishop, and pawns on both sides of the board, which also favors the bishop. I think Tani is actually a bit better here. A3 defending his b4 pawn. Rook to c3. The GM wants to play the rook over to g3 and target that g2 pawn. Tani blocks it with bishop to d3, so the rook cannot get over. Rook f to c8, doubling the rooks, protecting that rook a second time on c3. Now, the grandmaster is threatening knight takes f4. So Tani defends it. e5. He begins to advance his central majority. f takes e5 check, d e5, bishop e4, attacking the knight on d5. Knight to b6, rook e to c1. And what Tani is saying here is, I'm willing to trade off all the rooks because I prefer my endgame with the bishop versus knight and the outside pass pawn. So I'm okay trading off all of the rooks. So the Grandmaster does not want that to happen. So he plays knight to a4. As it turns out, if he had gone ahead and just taken on g3, he would have been a little bit better. Tani can't take the rook on c8 because it's defended. I mean, he can, but 
he doesn't win a piece because the knight would just recapture. So that would have been a little bit better for Karela. Knight a4, rook takes c3, knight takes c3, bishop to b7, irritating that rook on c8, rook c7, rook c1. Now Tani is offering an exchange of the minor pieces, and he's prepared to play a rook end game with the outside pawn majority. Rook takes b7, rook takes c3, and Kyrila makes a pretty big error here. He plays e4. Now, this does make some sense. That's his real trump. That's the real thing he can use to advance and win the game is the, the e pawn. Uh, but he's advanced it too early. And now Tani can attack it and win it. He plays king to e3, attacking the pawn. Uh, by the way, if you're getting value from this video, uh, be sure to click the like button and subscribe if you have not already. King to e5, rook to c5, check, pushing the king away, king to d6, king takes e4. Now, Tani is completely winning. But since this is a blitz game, he has to play quickly. He can't let his time run out on the clock. And Tani, by the way, handled his time very well. He had more time on the clock throughout almost the entire game. Kyrila plays rook to a7, attacking the pawn at a3. Tani plays rook to a5. He knows if the rooks get traded, the king and pawn endgame will be very easy to win. Black would have to tr chase down the pawns on the queen side, and Tani would just eat the king side pawns. So Kyrila cannot exchange rooks. Rook to c7, b5. Now, this is an error. Um, now black can fight back by activating his rook and pushing back white's king. He's very close to equality now. Since this is a fast game, though, they're both playing at almost lightning speed at this point. But Kyrila does play the correct move. Rook to c4, check. Pushing the king back. King to d3. Rook to g4. Immediately tar targeting the g3 pawn. a4. Rook to g3, check. King to c4. Rook to g4, check. King to b3. King to c5. Rook to a6. Rook to g3. King to c2. So the position is probably equal. Um, but very complex and very hard to play. Rook to g4, rook to c6, king to b4. Again, these moves were played at lightning speed. b6, advancing his pawn, king to a5, king to c3, king to a6. And Grandmaster Kyrila is using his king, he has the black pieces again, to stop Tani's queenside pawns from advancing. And so, as of now, the position is equal. He can succeed in doing that. Uh, Tani plays a5. The one thing he's got to be careful about, though, the Grandmaster, is that his king doesn't become trapped. It doesn't have a lot of squares over there. And if he's not careful, he can end up in a mating net. So he's got to be always worried about his king getting trapped. Rook to g3 check. And that is a mistake. Better move might have been rook to g1 to maybe check from behind. Rook to g3, king to b4. And now white is completely winning. Because black's king is, is in big trouble. Rook to g4 check. Now, right here, Tani should play king to c5. If he does, the threat of rook to c7, rook to a7, check mate, that threat would simply win the game for him. He blocks with the, the rook instead. And here, the Grand Master makes his final mistake. He should take the rook. Rook takes rook, king takes rook, and then play g5. If Tani were to actually take that pawn, then the Grand Master would win. He'd just advance the h-pawn. It'd be unstoppable. So he'd have to basically move his king, and then after g4, both kings would be in a state of sort of mutual zugzwang, Neither, neither side could advance at all, at, at all, and the position would be drawn. But instead, Kyrila plays rook to g3, giving Tani another shot at the same position. Rook to c7, rook to g4, king to c5, and now the game is over. There's nothing he can do. There are no checks, and rook to a7 is unstoppable. Kyrila plays one last move. Rook to g1, rook to a7, check mate. And the very strong Grandmaster was defeated. 
by Tani, and Tani played well throughout the entire game. It was a very, very impressive win, and even in the final position, the material is equal. Um, he just outplayed his opponent with a very short amount of time on the clock. A very impressive win, and I'm looking forward to more games from this talented young man. Thank you for joining us at Chess Dog. See you again soon. Bye.